I am three years of class seven C. I had made project. The topic of my project is rainwater harvesting. Rain harvest. Rainwater harvesting is the way to preserve fresh water for summer. I had made a tank where impurities are removed. From there, it goes to the house. There, we can use it for the daily use. Thank you. We know that the universe contains billions of galaxies, each containing millions of billions of stars. Our solar system belongs to the Milky Way galaxy. I am sure the solar system is always a fascinating topic for everybody. This is the model of our solar system. Our solar system consists of the sun, eight planets and the natural satellites and the other objects like the meteorites. Sun is a star. It is a big ball of fire. It gives the planets light and heat. The eight planets in the increasing order of their distance from the Sun are Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus and Neptune. They revolve around the Sun in definite orbits. Mercury is the smallest planet in the solar system. As Mercury is nearest to the Sun, it is extremely hot during the day and extremely cold during the night. The second planet, Venus, is the hottest and brightest of all planets. As it can be seen in the morning and evening, it is called as the morning star or evening star. The third planet in the solar system is our planet Earth. Nearly 70% of the Earth's surface is covered with water, due to which the Earth is also called the blue planet. It is the only planet on which life is known to exist. Moon is the natural satellite of the Earth. The fourth planet is Mars. It is also known as the red planet because of the presence of red soil and rocks. The fifth and the largest planet in the solar system is Jupiter. It has 67 natural satellites. The sixth planet, that is Saturn, is the second largest planet in the solar system. It has beautiful rings around it and that are made up of ice and dust. The seventh planet is Uranus. A thick layer of gas covers this planet. The eighth and the last planet of the solar system is Neptune. As the planet is farthest from the sun, cold winds blow here at very high speeds. That's all about the solar system. Let us have a look at the major continents of the world. Continents. A continent is one of Earth's seven main divisions of land. The continents are from largest to smallest, Asia, Africa, North America, South America, Antarctica, Europe and Australia. Asia. Asia is the largest continent. It covers about one third of the total land area of the earth. The continent lies in the eastern hemisphere. The Tropic of Cancer passes through this continent. Asia is separated from Europe by the Ural Mountains on the west. The combined landmass of Europe and Asia is called the Eurasia. Africa Africa is the second largest continent after Asia. The equator or zero degree latitude runs almost through the middle of the continent. A large part of Africa lies in the northern hemisphere. Africa is the only continent through which the Tropic of Cancer, the equator and the Tropic of Capricorn pass. The Sahara Desert, the world's largest hot desert, is located in Africa. The continent is bound on all sides by oceans and seas. The world's longest river, the Nile, flows through Africa. North America North America is the third largest continent of the world. It is linked to South America by a very narrow strip of land called the Isthmus of Panama. The continent lies completely in the northern and western hemisphere. It is bordered to the north 
by the Arctic Ocean, to the east by the Atlantic Ocean, to the southeast by South America and the Caribbean Sea, and to the west and south by the Pacific Ocean. South America South America lies mostly in the Southern Hemisphere. South America is bordered on the west by the Pacific Ocean and on the north and east by the Atlantic Ocean. North America and the Caribbean Sea lie to the northwest. The Andes, world's longest mountain range, runs through its length from north to south. South America has the world's largest river, the Amazon. Antarctica Antarctica, completely in the southern hemisphere, is a huge continent. The South Pole lies almost at the center of this continent. As it is located in the South Polar region, it is permanently covered with thick ice sheets. There are no permanent human settlements. Many countries have research stations in Antarctica. India also has research stations there. These are named as Maitri and Dakshin Gangotri. Europe Europe is much smaller than Asia. The continent lies to the west of Asia. The Arctic Circle passes through it. It is bound by water bodies on three sides. It is bordered by the Arctic Ocean to the north, the Atlantic Ocean to the west, the Mediterranean Sea to the south and Asia to the east. Australia Australia is the smallest continent that lies entirely in the Southern Hemisphere. Australia is also known as Oceania. It is surrounded on all sides by the oceans and seas. It is called an island continent. Australia's capital is Canberra, located in the southeast between the larger and more important economic and cultural centres of Sydney and Melbourne. That's all about the major continents of the world by Gayatri Sargent of Class 6B. Thank you. Hello friends, I am here to introduce you my ego-friendly multi-purpose stand which is not only for kitchen accessories but stationery and etc. It is called multi-purpose eco-friendly stand because it is made up of natural plant products like cardboard, bamboo sticks and gum from the natural rubber tree. If this is broken, or it is of no use. You can seriously dump it into the soil or burrow it, which will force the soil to make grow new plants, which is very essential for our environment. Let's guys, let's join our hands to save our environment. Good morning. I am Emmanuel C. B. Sebastian from class 8C. And today I am here to talk about how life began on Earth. 4 billion and 600 million years ago, there was no Earth or any other planet in our solar system. There was only a newly formed protosun and a ring of gas and dust. But about 4 billion and 540 million years ago, our Earth was formed. But it was far from being inhabitable. The conditions in Earth was really hellish. There was molten lava in the place of our oceans and volcanoes could be found everywhere. Also, the temperature in Earth was about 4700 degrees Celsius and there was no oxygen for survival of life in Earth. After several years, the Earth collided with a smaller, young planet that was called Tia, which broke and then gradually formed our moon. 4 billion and 100 million years to 3 billion and 800 million years ago, a large number of asteroids started falling on Earth. Some scientists believe that these asteroids contain small amount of life-supporting moisture in them. And when they fell on Earth, the Earth received this moisture. It is said that half of the Earth's oceans were created from this moisture. 650 million years ago, our planet turned into a snowball. Yes, quite literally, it turned into a snowball. Some scientists like to refer this as the snowball earth. Even in this time, under the thick layer of ice, the planet managed to keep a fair temperature. Every part 
of the planet was covered in ice even the equators but no ice age can stop the volcanoes and the carbon dioxide that was released into the air by their eruptions forever changed the world the carbon dioxide accumulated in the air caused the glaciers to melt down and this melting caused the release of huge amounts of oxygen in the earth's atmosphere making earth a habitable planet hi everyone i am ankit rasing from class 8 today there is my science exhibition in front of you today i am going to tell you about the planet and the solar system the whole world around goes around and around the sun this is my working model of the solar system i can show you with the two helping batteries connect and the solar system will start moving as i can show you just a minute see how it works i connected only two batteries the speed is so much i'll stop it i will tell you all about all these planets the sun the biggest which gives us light to all the eight planets and all the eight planets move around the sun and on their own orbit earth is our own planet which is the third planet in the solar system neptune is the neptune is the largest means the farthest planet to the sun and the mercury is the nearest planet to the sun jupiter is the biggest planet on the in the solar system not on the earth earth is the first planet to go on the mars because no other planet has life india is the only country which has gone to mars in the first attempt to they have launched their missile and when the us mars came near the satellite has launched here the hottest planet is venus and the coldest planet is neptune we can say that we get vitamin d from the sun rays which are getting the sun have one moon jupiter has seven moons and some other planets has some moons the moon rotates and rotates when it goes here some uh, half of the uh, planet of earth gets the rays of the sun and half of the planet is getting night then again it rotates it also rotates earth rotates sun uh, sun not rotates only the eight planets rotates they are mercury venus earth mars jupiter saturn uranus and neptune i needed a piece a piece of paper a paper uh, and a cardboard uh, some wooden sticks and some small cardboard means i have cut it with a circle type right? and some uh, motor and a cap to connecting wires and uh, two batteries for the balance i uh, have kept like this i can show you once more the working effect of this of class 8c i am going to explain my model i did a model of how day and night occurs on earth the earth orbits the sun once every 365 days and rotates around its axis once every 24 hours day and night are due to the earth rotating on its axis not its orbit around the sun the term one day is determined by the term the earth takes to rotate once on its axis and it includes both day and night so here you can see its day over the right side and its night over the left side now when the earth rotates on its axis now it now on the right side it's day and the left side it's night so this is my model oh, yeah. thank you here i have two mysteries that will surely shock you first on the list shani signapur the village without locks and doors if you were to visit the village of shani signapur in the indian state of maharashtra it would be confusing even today no house in the village has any locks or even doors and people leave their wealth and jewelry unsecured in the open the most shocking part is that there hasn't been a single incident of reported theft in over 300 years according to the legends it is believed that the village is protected by the hindu deity shani 
representative of the planet Saturn and that any thief who troubles this village will be immediately punished by losing their sight. They so deeply believe that the village now even has banks and police stations that are lockless. Coming up next, Sentinel Island. North Sentinel Island in Andaman and Nicobar is home to what is widely believed to be the most isolated tribe in the world, that is, the Sentinelese. What makes them special is that they have remained contactless, not because of their geographical location, but due to their own rejection. They even use violence against those who try to establish contact. Recently, 27-year-old John Allen was killed by the Sentinelese tribe in the Andaman and Nicobar Islands after he illegally entered the protected zone with the help of fishermen. Once, a team went to the island to shoot a documentary about the tribe, but in vain. They were attacked and luckily no one died. Events like this led to the banning of the entry to the island by the Indian government. One of the suggested reasons for them not establishing contact with the torturing of other tribes during the British Rosa Parks, natural or pre-planned. Rosa Parks is considered as a normal American who started the civil rights movement. Also, she is considered as mother of the civil rights movement. Many movies and books are there which are based on her life. In the eyes of the people, she was a seamstress, but only few knew the true story. It all started in 1955 when there was a war between America and Vietnam, while on the other hand, Due to the Jim Crow law, there was segregation due to color. Because of this, seats were divided for each races. Back seat for the blacks, front for the whites and the middle for both. If a white was standing, then the blacks had to give their seat to them. The misconception is that one day while Rosa was going to her workplace, when asked to give seat to a white passenger, she was too tired and refused. This led to driver Blake calling police and she got arrested. This incident started the civil rights movement. But the truth is, she was not only a seamstress but also a member of National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, that is, the NAACP. Not only this, nine months before the above said incident, 15 year old. Claudit Calvi also did the same. It was then decided by the NAACP that by recreating the scene they can start a bear strike. Therefore, they trained Rosa Parks and sent her on the same bus whose driver kicked her out 12 years ago. Hence the conclusion, it was all pre-planned. Now I leave it up to you to decide whether it was natural or it was all pre-planned by the NAACP. Thank you. The biggest misconception, Columbus discovered America. We have been studying this misconception for past many years and due to this misconception his name was written in the book of history. But this story is very far from the truth and America because this story is of the Caribbean islands. Columbus thought that Earth's size was too small and because of his wrong calculation, he didn't even reach India, but reached the Caribbean islands and called the people living there as Red Indians. If Columbus was not the person to discover America, then who was it? Well, America was discovered by the European Lee Ferguson who reached America 500 years before Columbus. A lot of people celebrate Lee Ferguson Day on October 9th. And then also in the world, it was a misconception for a long time that Columbus discovered America. Jesus Christ was born on 25th December. Well, got a shock, right? You would be thinking that how? We are celebrating Christmas every 25th December. Now the biggest evidence of my word is Bible, in which nothing is mentioned about the birth of Jesus or that he was born on 25th December. In fact, after 300 years of Jesus' death, people started discussing that when was Jesus born. Now there are different theories regarding this. And one of them is, in ancient Roman Empire every year 17 to 25 December was celebrated as a winter festival, where people ate together and gave gifts to one another. 
and also in the honor of St. Nicholas as he distributed gifts on 25th December. That is why when the Roman Emperor converted into constant Christianity and since that time everybody was finding Jesus' birthday, so they decided to celebrate winter festival as that of Jesus' birthday. And some historians say that he took birth between 6th to 3rd BC and that also in spring or summer season. Greetings, I am Dhruv Mahadik and I am here to explain to you all what the Vietnam War is. Let's get right into it. What was the Vietnam War? The Vietnam War was a long, costly and divisive conflict that pitted the communist government of North Vietnam against South Vietnam and its principal ally, the United States. Roots of the Vietnam War the Vietnam War was a clash between North Vietnam's communist power and South Vietnam opposing it, which led to active US involvement in the war from 1954, which though ongoing conflict in the, this region had stretched back several decades. United States in the war Often we come across the question, why and when did the US enter this? With the Cold War intensifying worldwide, the United States hardened its policies against any allies of the Soviet Union. And by 1955, President Dwight D. Eisenhower had pledged his firm support to Diem and South Vietnam. The Domino Theory USA's Domino Theory stated that if one South Asian country fell to communism, many others would soon follow. Hence, sending more troops and equipment from American military and the CIA to ADM, who was the president of South Vietnam, in the war. By 1962, more than 9,000 US soldiers were present in Vietnam. The Political Instability of 1963 In a successful coup by his own generals, DM and his brother were killed. And just three weeks later, the shocking assassination of John F. Kennedy, the 35th president of the US, took place, leading to political instability in both USA and South Vietnam, followed by more and more pressure from their fast-growing communist counterpart. USA's active troop engagement of 1964 this instability persuaded Kennedy's successor, Lyndon B. Johnson, to increase US engagement in the war, which was initially supported by the masses, and it led to a huge amount of bombing from 1964 by US aerial support. In 65, Johnson made a huge decision of active American military engagement by sending more than 200,000 troops to the war. Growth of Anti-War Rebellions by 1967, following Johnson's big decision, while American troops in Vietnam were reaching the 500,000 mark, the anti-war movement was growing fast, leading to bitter division of the American public in two groups. Start of the peace talks of 67 to 68. More and more people started supporting the anti-war movement post reports of high expenditures and casualties. In the late 1967, right before the election year, seeking anti-war communist supports, Johnson reduced the involvement in aerial attacks, met by a positive response from the North Vietnam, which eventually led to peace talks. Richard M. Nixon and the Vietnamization the election was won by Richard M. Nixon who chose to increase the equipment supply and aerial attacks and reduce US Army personal involvement in the war. This tactic was known as Vietnamization. In the coming years, many events and revelations led to US slowly withdrawing from the war and in 1973 a final peace talk concluded US involvement in the war. South-North Vietnam conflicts however continued for the next two years. Impact of the Vietnam War more than 2 million dead, 3 million wounded and more than 12 million people from Vietnam became refugees. In 1976, Vietnam was unified as the Socialist Republic of Vietnam. The United States had spent more than $120 billion in the war which led to widespread inflation followed by the worldwide oil crisis of 1973 with fuel prices skyrocketing everywhere. So this is Dhruv signing off. I hope you found this interesting. That's it. Thank you.